Okay, it says we're live. So, hi everybody. Um, this is Gina DiGirolamo, and I'm broadcasting live from my home office here in Paso Robles. Um, I have a couple different projects that I do. One of them is called Healing Heart TV, and I thought, what better way to um, uh, have some content that is really helpful for everybody? And so, I decided to start a live stream interview show. Uh, called the Heart of Paso, where I'm talking to um, community members of Paso Robles, uh, business owners, all different kinds of things. And, you know, I just started doing it yesterday with my dear friend, Jeff Weisinger, for um, Jeffrey's Wine Country and Barbecue. And uh, he had a wonderful friend, has a wonderful friend named Vicki Mullen. And she reached out to me today, and she has a great um, a business called Applause Children's Theater in Paso Robles. So I'm going to enlarge you, Miss Vicki. So here we are both together. And um, so Vicki's had some wonderful things that she's doing during this time um, for, for the kids that are involved. And uh, I'm gonna have her talk a little bit first about her business. And uh, and then we'll we'll talk about the current state of affairs. <laughs> yeah, really. Huh? I'm going to turn it over to you for a minute to just talk about um, uh, you know what uh, you're all up to over at Applause Children's Theater. Well, thanks, Gina. Uh, it's nice to be here from my home. <laughs> so, well, Applause Children's Theater was founded um, five years ago. We're on our fourth production. And it is a nonprofit children's theater where all kids are stars, which means our, our um, mission statement basically when we say all kids are stars is that every child who signs up for one of our productions is cast in the show. And we've had such an overwhelming response when we do each show that we usually have to set a, a cast size limit. Um, we've had shows as big as 80 kids um to as small as 50 kids this production of um, beauty and the beast we have 57 children and so all kids are cast in the show um and we do auditions just to choose our leading roles but usually i i double cast so all kids most kids more kids get a chance for a leading role and then i usually try to write in smaller speaking roles i add in some lines here and there for the chorus kids so that you know, a lot of kids get a part and get a speaking role, but we do one big show a year, hoping to move up to more than one show a year. And we do an amazing summer camp called Broadway Bound, where kids get to per experience all parts of theater. They get to do scene work, dancing every day, make costumes, make sets, um, do uh, makeup, and then put a show on for their parents, um, singing lessons also. And then we do some acting classes during the year too with a director from LA that comes in and does an intensive acting class workshop. So we're growing a little bit yeah. at a time. And, um, but this has definitely put a stop sign in front of us for a little while. I would say you're <laughs> very- But we haven't stopped, we've been moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> yeah, you're a very hands-on business, that's for sure. And um, gosh, not only for you, but these kids. So how are you handling this? How are you and the kids? You said you're in the middle of a production. You're in the middle of preparing for Beauty and the Beast. And uh, we right. do have, uh, I don't know if it's one of your kids or a parent, but Selena Lily's Denton says, hi, Vicki. <laughs> hi, Selena. Yes, Selena's daughter, Lily, is um, one of our little leads. She's the enchantress, and she also plays, plays the rose. And that's what I mean about giving lots of kids parts instead of having a rose underneath a glass jar and putting a rose there we have one of our children playing the rose and she has this amazing costume made by a community member that the petals come off the costume and so she drops a petal here and there off of her costume so she gets to play the rose in the show but back to your question we were we only had i only had one i'm the director of the productions as well as the founder of the theater and we had one and a half scenes left to block of the whole show. And then we were ready to run the show from beginning to end and have our dress rehearsals because opening night was supposed to be April 30th. And um, 
we were at the point where all the kids finally got to put on all their costumes and start running rehearsals with costumes and then everything just kind of went ah school is no longer in session and kids can't meet for rehearsals so um we turned everything virtual and we've been i've been having rehearsals with the kids online through zoom um to run their lines and practice their dances and um, my music director miss haley has been doing music with them online to try to keep the show moving and try to keep them knowing their lines and enthusiastic about the show. All the parents have said they'll stick with us. Um, we haven't canceled the show. We just postponed it to a later date. We haven't picked our date yet, um, but sets are still being made and costumes are, a little bit of costumes are still being finished. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, I can't even imagine, um, you know, a rehearsal on online has gotta be, uh, first of all, very unique, right? Um, something most cast members don't have to go through. I mean, I know as actors have to maybe submit little videos of themselves, right, for auditions and things like that. But to have a whole crew rehearsing together, especially kids, must be quite a challenge. Um, and we're actually going to share a little bit of that in, in just a few minutes. Um, we're going to share some of the footage so people can see what the kids are doing and all the kids just as a disclaimer You said oh, it's okay. The parents are fine with us showing it um, and all of that um, But something I, I want to also before we get too deep into the the nuts and bolts of what's going on in your daily um, uh, Situation with rehearsals just Paso Robles as a community, you know, I'm calling this show the heart of Paso. And I think when you reached out to me today, you said something really wonderful about um, what's more than the heart of Paso than kids. Can you, can you, do you remember that, what you wrote me on that and maybe some feeling about that? Well, yeah, I, I think I said that um, I was so proud of these kids because they were right in the middle. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that they were right in the middle of this show, more than the middle. They were close to the end, and yet they've had such drive. They've had such um, attitude, such a positive attitude to move forward, to continue practicing online, and just the attitude that these young kids have had from the ages of six years old to seventeen years old to continue with something and their main purpose of continuing with it is to bring this show to life for our community when we're when it's time to and if that isn't the heart of paso i don't know what is um because yeah. they want to bring life they want to bring this beauty and the beast you know and what is beauty and the beast it's about this gal who's locked up in this castle you know <laughs> the beast. and and um you know so she wants they want to bring this play to life and they don't want to quit and none of them have been quitters and it's been and they're just so you know adamant about sticking with it and being there online to keep moving forward and the positive attitudes that they have had um i think would put some of us adults to shame <laughs> right they um, certainly can teach us some they, things they, I'm sure. they do have the heart i mean theater kids theater family it's what theater's all about and um it, it it is it's what heart is what theater is all about yeah it's true um so you know what let's show let's show the people what what the kids have been up to here uh let me pull it up on my side real quick before we share it get to the right spot here get the volume down and i just love this um so let's show them what we've got and I'll try to full screen it a little bit more better so they could see. But so this is uh, you, uh, Vicki, you, you used your phone to record this on your screen from what your, yes. so your point of view of, of your rehearsal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. The girl has lost her father and her beautiful Master, have you saw Sam girl could be the one to break the spell? Of course I have. I'm not a fool. Good. So you fall in love with her. She falls in love with you. And boom, the spell is broken. We'll be 
human again by midnight. Yeah, it's not that easy. You think it's time. What thing, Mama? Time. Oh, hang so on. Chip has a line in there. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So, <laughs> I love that part. Um, this is his pot. It's moving air. It's not that easy. Not like that. Yeah, it's not that easy. These things take time. Oh, what things, Mama? That thing, Chip, I'll tell you what But we don't have time. The walls have already begun to wilt. It's no use. She's so beautiful and I'm... Well, look at me. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> I'm going to stop that part there because I want to share some other stuff too. But real quick, before we share more um, footage like that, I want to... Yeah, those are our castle leads. So. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. But um, already we had a friend uh, do who's donated some money. And I just wanted to, yes, announce that. There is a donation button on this live feed where yeah, you can wonderful. donate. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. So um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can donate uh, to the to the um, school right now through the donate button. And it uh, looks like your good friend Jeff did, uh, did a little bit of that as well. And Thank you, Jeff. And we've also got another place you can go if you're not comfortable donating on Facebook or you don't know how. You can always just go to your website, correct? And um, yes. I'm going to share what that looks like so people know how to do that as well. And let's see here. So this is your website, Applause Children's Theater. And there's yes. a great donate button here. And I love this poster for Beauty and the Beast. That's going to be great. <laughs> right. We had just gotten the posters printed and had just started putting them up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful poster. So. Right. So, yeah. So you could donate to the theater. And there's Ooh. some of our costumes online there. Yeah. Yeah. They're great. The costumes look amazing. Who makes all the costumes? Well, um, some of them um, have were already made, but a lot of them have been handmade by myself and a lot of parent volunteers in the play. So wow, it looks very professional. That's for sure. Um, definitely, I bet the kids love getting dressed up in these costumes. Yeah, I have had such wonderful parents, moms this year that know how to sew, that have made dresses after dresses and costume after costume and um and then a local costumer that uh works in la lives in our town and she's been helping with some costumes as well that's great you know yeah we're, we're lucky we do have um a lot of people who's definitely been in in theater and, and in hollywood and we're not that far and it's great um about the production when you do when the production does go where will it be at well, we're very fortunate this year. We're able to use the Pastor Robles Nazarene, Church of the Nazarene um, Church building. Um, it's on 12th Street. And so we um, built, okay. they have and a small stage may have area. Frozen in there. Might just be me, but in any case, in just in case she did freeze and um, you guys aren't um, hearing Vicki yet. Yeah, she is. She's back up. Let me bring her back. Okay. In. Hold on, so we're Vicky. at Pastor Robles Church of the Nazarene on 12th street and okay. they have a small stage in their church and so we built um i was able to get some um platform pieces from another parent <laughs> that was getting rid of all this wood and i and he texted me and said do you want these big pieces of wood and i'm like sure and so the pastor and some of his um men at, his, at the church built the um st additional stage pieces so we could enlarge the stage and so we enlarge the stage there in the church and we'll be holding it there at that pass of nazarene great and then i'm going to put up here you shared with me that tickets can when they do go on sale because you don't know right now what's going to happen correct correct so the ticket sales have been stopped up there right now okay um and so let's see let's show them i love this part where you guys were rehearsing um some of the musical part of it some of the songs so oh, me... some of our dancing yeah that's really cute too uh so let's show 
show them what these kids are doing while they're home. Now yeah, I think know. yesterday we had a dance rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, let me make sure I got the right one here. So yeah, this is fun. It's it's the be our guest part and um, right. super cute as well. Let's give it a shot. Again, you took this with your phone, correct? That's awesome. We should give him an applause for that. Yeah, Good exactly. Job. <laughs> they little, did a great job. It's a little job. bit harder to do music. It's a little harder to do music than it is just to do lines, but we're still trying so they can keep their steps going. <laughs> right. And you said, uh, what, one of you's playing the music and it just plays over everybody's speaker? Is that how it works for you guys? Right. Everybody mutes themselves except for one and they play the music in that way, you know. Yeah, it, it it works the best best we can, but the goal is just to keep the their steps going so that they right. keep the dance in their head. <laughs> right. You know, I like what you shared with me earlier today when we were talking about how um, their rehearsals really have two purposes. You said. Um, so Absolutely. can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, when I decided to that we needed to keep rehearsals going so that kids remember their lines. Um, more importantly to me, they do have two purposes. They have to remember their lines um, and then also camaraderie. They need to remember, you know, they needed to get together and to see each other and to keep that family unit going and just to have that part of being together. Um, that that is as most more important sometimes than keeping the lines going is just to see each other all the time and to know that the show is still going to move forward. And that, that to me is just as important, you know? Yeah, I, I, I can, I can understand that. And I think that's what we're all feeling. Right. I mean, I've even right. thought about, you You know, a lot of us maybe who aren't working right now, um, and, uh, I do work in one of the local tasting rooms and I was thinking the other day, boy, am I going to forget, you, you know, my lines <laughs> in the tasting room, yeah. but I also miss the camaraderie obviously of the people and that's, you know, the adults miss it. The kids miss it. We all miss it. Um, and it's great right. that we have this. And that's the other reason why I wanted to do this program is to get people connected and wait for us to communicate and get online together and, and, and share what we're going through. Um, something else that was right. really, really wonderful that you shared with me, uh, um, the, uh, the lonely, the lonely Oak. Oh yes. We had a, um, you know, with all the masks being made, the lonely Oak have found some beauty in the beast material and they reached out to one of our, um, parents and the um, board members and, um, she said that she went to make masks out of the Beauty and the Beast material and she sold them for five dollars like she sells some of her masks and donate all of the money any that were bought any of the Beauty and the Beast ones that were bought to applause children's theater and they sold out really fast that material and so she um, t contacted me the other day and is sending a check for the amount of money that she sold those um, masks for so that's wonderful i mean because our show is our biggest income you know and um, we know that ticket sales will be down this year and you know we're hoping that of course once we get to put the show on that people will come to see our show that's the biggest thing we can ask for and to support right. the kids and let them put this on but the community reaching out to us like that and doing things like that for us is just wonderful because that amount nation amount no matter how big or small 
puts a few puts some costumes on children or helps the, some of the sets that we've already bought or um you know and that's just such a huge huge help to us yeah yeah absolutely and i know that i know that your show will go on um at, at some point and i'm sure the community is gonna uh definitely want to support that is it uh, what other ways can we support the the theater um we so we've talked about donations here online uh at the at the um website buying tickets um, yeah, what definitely else buying tickets on the website you know donations also one of the things that we do at our show usually is we have a raffle and we are reaching out to community at this time in our stage in our show we're reaching out to businesses for raffle items or things to put in a basket and for things and for gift cards you know to raffle off those kind of mm -hmm. things and um that brings in quite a bit of our income too and right now you know things are tough for people we're not able to go out and reach out to people before we close before we closed you know we had ice cream cake from cold stones and different things now we can't go out and ask for those things so if anybody has a business or they want to put together a basket of you know a beach basket together or they have That's something that they've gotten for christmas that is brand new and they never used it you know um and they want to donate it or they want to put something together or give us money to buy it to put together a basket when we do run our show or they do have a business that they'd like to donate you know, tickets to the movies or Ravine or, or a wine tour or something. Um, since we can't come to you right now and you've been our sponsors before or you're new and like to sponsor and put a raffle ticket or, or to get a raffle basket together or a raffle item for us, that would be huge too. So, and I like know, this, this is, this isn't just theater, but to our kids, this is their sport, you know, this is what they do. And, um, and, it's some of them gave up sports to do this, you know, and mm. they have found their safe place. And that's, I hear that from my kids a lot. I hear that from their parents. I hear it from some particular parents. Sorry. It makes me teary when I talk about that as a safe place, but some of these kids have tried other things and they, it just didn't work. And they come into theater and they find their place here mm. and they find it their safe place. And, and, everybody just accepts each other and i think yeah. that was the hardest thing on closing the doors on march 13th was that i didn't get a chance to say goodbye to these kids and it's neat after we get done with a rehearsal that they just stay and talk you know and it's hard to press that button and end the meeting because they oh. just want to keep talking you know? yeah yeah i bet i bet and i, I yeah. yeah you're right and i like what you have to say about that this is their sport because um um, yeah, we keep hearing, oh, all the sports have been canceled and things like that. But yeah, there's kids that this is their sport and this is their love. And it's great that they have um, your theater to find their their place and their sense of self. So that's that's yeah. wonderful, Vicki. Um, there was one other thing that you said earlier today uh, about you, you know, giving back. So to your own um uh, people support us throughout the year. So what are you doing? Yeah. To help the community and, and the heart of Paso. Yeah, definitely. I've been posting a lot um, of our sponsors names um, and encouraging our people in our theater, as well as the community to purchase from our sponsors and purchase from the people that have donated to us over the years um, you know, we as nonprofits reach out to those, reach out to the community all the time and say, you know, will you donate? Cold Stone donates to us all the time, it gives us certificates to give to the kids because we choose our most valuable actor at every rehearsal. Oh, wow. And and he gives little certificates to them. So, you know, we reached out and went and got ice cream one night from them for dinner, you know, and um, Jeffrey's is a sponsor and we've ordered dinner and Chili's is a sponsor. So we ordered dinner from there the other night and Sweet Lou's is a sponsor and um, uh, The Slice is a sponsor. And there's just, you know, we have so many sponsors that we try are trying to reach out to and whether it's a dinner place or a winery or um, other places I'm trying to, you know, park cinemas. And so they're selling popcorn now, you know, and 
trying to reach back to our sponsors and purchase from them during this time as well to keep them going, you know, and tell them thank you for always sponsoring us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's it, right. It's, that's what makes community is us all taking care of each other. Um, right. Rely on each other uh, financially and emotionally and, and for entertainment. It's what's so wonderful about Paso Robles. It's one of the things I love about it. Uh, we're small town enough where that's the truth and, and we get to take care of each other. And um, so I'm going to also, let's see, when it does come time to buy the tickets, uh, you said you can get them at uh, one uh, my805ticks.com. So just keep that in mind, everybody, when time comes right. up. And that's a place you can buy the tickets um, directly. And if people um, have already bought tickets, they should have gotten an email from us about their tickets now. So Okay, good, good. Um, I think there was a couple things you wanted to uh, point out too. Maybe you're going to talk about maybe having the parents of these kids uh, take pictures of them in costume. You were talking about maybe getting, because you were just about ready to get the costumes. Is that what it was? And you want to maybe have the parents yeah, come I'm trying, get the costumes? Right. I'm trying to get the last minute costumes, you know, costumes as good as I can and get them done. And then hopefully here when, we might be able to leave our homes or, um, you know, I'd like to get parents to be able to come to the studio and pick up their kid's garment bag so that they can start taking pictures of their child in their costumes and we can start posting what those look like because that's kind of where we were at. And we have some gorgeous costumes that, you know, we need to get the kids in and get, you know, people to see. And um, so we can see the plates and the forks and spoons and knives and the teapots and the, you know, all the different things and the corkscrew and the wine bottle and, um, it, you know, and we can maybe do a virtual rehearsal with them in their costume, you know, so, yeah. um, it would be kind of fun because they were all so excited to finally see their costumes coming to reality. And I was too. Um, so we'll get there. Um, but For sure. I think it'll be a little bittersweet. I know these kids are looking forward to that April 30th opening night, and I'm sure it'll be bittersweet, but I'm trying to think of something we can do that'd be fun. Um, Applause Children's Theater did an online virtual talent show for the community, and we had some really neat people People in the community posted neat videos on our talent show page, <laughs> and that was fun. So I'm going to keep some things going and, um, you know, just have fun. But... Um, it's all about just having fun and keeping their their family theater vibe together and keeping them, yeah. you know, happy. So yeah, well, that's great. One last uh, bit I want to ask you, and if, if anybody has any questions, you can ask, and we can see it in the comments. If you have any questions for Vicky or for myself, um, but Vicky, so tell us a little bit about. Okay, we know you're doing rehearsals during the uh, the day on Zoom with the kids. How are you dealing with all of this? I mean, this has got to be a little challenging for you, obviously. You're used to being with the kids. You're used to being at your theater. Um, so can you tell us how, how are you doing? Well, if, if this if this is not the time where the show must go on, um, it fits. <laughs> this is it. But it's hard. Um, you know, I, I used to be a full-time school teacher, and then I am not anymore, and this is what I do. Um, I say my kids are my life, and they are. Um, I went down to the studio the other day um, to meet a parent who was dropping off a garment bag, and our pass didn't cross like they were supposed to. And I went in, and it was just so quiet. And at that point, I realized the tears just started to come. And so I thought, well, maybe it'll help to turn the music on. So I turned on this, this, the music to the show and that made it worse. <laughs> and at that point I realized that it isn't a studio. Um, it isn't the theater when it's just that building. And when I go in there, it's really not the studio. It's not the theater and tell those little voices and those happy squealing voices come through the door going, hi, Miss Vicky, or, you know, Shane, you know, Phoebe, and they, they're, hi, guys, oh, my gosh, you won't know what happened at school today. And they're like, that, that noise fills the room. And that's, what, that's where the theater is. Right now, it's just the building that we're paying rent on and um, 
but the theater is these kids. And when I finally worked, figured out Zoom and my theater comes to life at four o'clock on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays in my living room now. And that has helped me a lot because I miss my kids um, and I miss hugging them. I miss seeing their faces. I miss, you know, um, but having that, having this virtual does really help me a lot. Um, but it did help me realize that, you know, theater has a whole different, it's a whole different community. Um, when your kids are in theater, it's not just an after school activity. It, it becomes a family for them. I grew up in theater and I went to my 50 year reunion with my theater group and I'm yeah. still friends with these kid people. So, um, it's a whole different ball game. And like I said, these kids find their niche and they, they love it. And, and I have connections with them. And, and I realized that when I walked into that empty studio, it's just a building right now and it will have that laughter and life in it again. And right now that's on the screen and the studio is on that screen and I'm glad I have it because I don't know what I'd do without that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're so, all very grateful for Zoom and technology. Yeah, so, um, definitely. They yeah. are, you know, your radio station is the perfect station for what this is because they are definitely my heart. And um, yeah, I don't know what I'd do without them. They, they definitely are my heart. So. Well, from what I'm reading in some of these comments, uh, you're very special to them, and uh, that's amazing. And if anybody's showing us what the heart of Paso is, I think you are by sharing your heart you. with us and and what you have to offer. And um, I like what you said. I mean, you know, Paso Robles is uh, what is it? It is a beautiful. Um, place in nature. It has streets and buildings and all kinds of things, but without the people, um, really isn't anything other than that. And so we're grateful, you know, for this community. And, and I know everybody here has the same sentiment. I know all, all of us really feel we love Paso. I don't know anybody who lives here. Who Absolutely. <laughs> very, um, very blessed blessed when, when I, you know, when the parents responded overwhelmingly that they, you know, want to stick with the show and put it on when we can. So I would really great not to lose parents because of this. And, you know, their kids have worked hard and we all have, and we want to see it come and we want to put this on for everybody. And um, it's going to be a great show, even, even greater than it would have been, I think, because of what we're going through, you know? I think so, so too. We'll all, I yeah, think so we'll too. We'll all be excited to finally present it to everybody so well vicky thank you so much for sharing time and and sharing um you know your story with the kids i know that like i said i've learned something new about our community and i'm excited and and definitely look forward to seeing this show when we can so um like I said, you know, from my heart to your heart and everybody's heart who's who's watching all our hearts here in Paso. We love you. Stay strong. Stay strong. Thank you give the kids uh, a break a leg for us. And um, keep us posted, definitely, on the progress. I will. All right, Gina. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. All right. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Um, thank you for joining. Oh. And Echo seems to think I'm talking to, to her. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I will be on again, I hope, tomorrow night. Um, we're going to be talking to more people. And like I said, if you have a business or a story or something you want to share with your community as the Heart of Paso, please feel free to reach out to me directly. You can leave a message in the feed or you can direct message me. I'll send a friend request. That's how Vicki got in touch with me. And um, we will put you on the schedule. All right. Have a wonderful night and keep your hearts going, Paso.